what it do what's up your girl g here welcome back to my channel appreciate you for tuning in we are gonna get into the collective y'all bell collective down south all right um speaking of down south y'all if you haven't heard of this dude mexican ot mexican ot just like johnny dang hey and he got paul wall remix y'all know paul wall he's just mm, one of my favorite white boys he look good now with the, you know, with the salt and pepper chin hair and everything. Um, but yeah, y'all, down south, uh, you know, whipping the kitchen like cane. Uh, if you ain't never heard of Mexican OT, go look him up. Google it. The way his, the way his R's be rolling in these songs, with the -ta 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 -ta. <laughs> the way, uh, the way that the R's be rolling, okay, the Mexican OT, the way the artists be rolling, okay, go check him out, nonetheless. But, Bell Collective. We're going to get to this episode, y'all. This actually was a pretty decent episode. There's definitely a lot to talk about. Um, and it's just, y'all, we just need to send prayers up for Latrice. Because, girl, I know it probably seems like everybody seems to be getting on to you and being so involved in the relationship. But it's just like, girl, at some point when multiple people who are outside of your relationship are picking up on a certain energy or a certain demeanor or just overall just character characteristics like there might be time for some introspection just like when people say like well if everybody in the room don't like you like everybody can't be wrong you know type of that situation maybe you want to look at yourself latrice this is what we're kind of like where we're at girl like if everybody is starting to see characteristics and everybody's starting to pick up on you know certain demeanors of cliff your husband i get it my man my man my man my husband we get it but it's like you can't keep ignoring it like it has to be addressed um but yeah you guys let's go hang in this episode so we open up with d gonna uh meeting gucci she had a baby too because y'all know d and uh star i think is when they have the baby they were kind of getting close because they both had the baby at the same time but now that gucci and selena don't fought that and knocked it back three steps and then on top of that uh gucci filing you know, the, the police report, that knocked it back another 10 steps, definitely. You know, and it's just like, oh, y'all were doing so good. Like, we, y'all can't keep going doing these, like, you, this this back and forth because it's not healthy for the family unit as a whole. And especially with y'all saying, like, the grandbabies now is here, y'all want to do better. Like, it's going to require everybody, you know, taking accountability for their part. And Ms. Gucci, it's time for you to start taking accountability for your part. You know, in the beginning, Miss Gucci, like, kind of was, you know, one of our favorites, uh, you know, viewers' favorite. I liked Gucci when she came on. But the more I'm watching Gucci, I ain't gonna lie, Miss Hunty, there's some, mm, I'm starting to get real stank face look with you. I'm looking at you real stank face now because you sitting here trying to act like, oh, you know, she's bringing up how, oh, well, you know, Jay. Jay, he got a call from Sanjay, like, oh, your girl Shantae Moore, uh, Shantae, Sasha, uh, Sasha, whatever, you know, she done filed against mama, like, how dare she, and it's like, well, and Gucci, you keep trying to slide these little jabs in, like, well, you know, somebody has to, you know, show, uh, show a good role model, shut up, because you're not a good role model yourself either, because how is it that we keep hearing of how you and Selena, you know, were, capable of being around each other but now all of a sudden the one time it's time for y'all to interact on on camera she, she, she goes left you know like it's not making any sense and it was just giving real y'all allowed y'all allowed the cameras to, to kind of get to y'all's head and put y'all in a situation and put y'all's emotions in a place that like got both y'all riled up trying to like one up each other and then Next thing you know, Gucci got a big at knot in your head and you embarrassed. I think it's another reason, partly the reason why she filed for the the, the, the charge. One, she was embarrassed because <laughs> she got that big ass knot in her head. And two, Gucci, I, I, now Gucci girl, I'm a smart thinker and I like to, you know, try to, I'm a person who understands like some people like to play chess and Gucci, I think you try to play chess with Miss Selena right now. And the fact is you filing this complaint or, you know, putting this charge makes it incapable of her to come on the show and speak about the situation. That's what it's giving. That's really what it's giving. 
because that fight after that happened would have been a good intro of Selena now becoming a part of the show. Let's get her side of the fight. You know, let's hear more about their relationship from Selena's point of view. That would have been the natural progression. And you know, Carlos would have been all about that with his own miss. And so that's what would have happened. But now that Gucci did this, oh, Gucci, we peeping game. Or at least some of us are. I, I We peeping game. Um, but of course, D when I'm, you know, she's going to defend her mama, just like the girl's going to fit, going to defend Selena. What did she think was going to happen? You know, she was just going to be able to do that. And you know, nothing was going to happen. You know, that's the problem. That whole family, what I was saying a long time ago, they never take accountability because before D and the, the sisters weren't really, you know, good with each other. Um, I do believe probably that, you know, there was some passive aggressive behavior, on all three of their side, but also at the same time, maybe D isolated herself as well. Like two truths can exist at the same time, but it definitely was given. Like if the girls felt this way about Gucci, they probably were being, you know, a holes to D, you know, in and out throughout the days of, you know, living. But you know, D, she's not. Uh, Gucci might be time for you to go have a little therapy session with D. Because she keeps putting out there, she's like, my mom neglected me at one point to, to take care of y'all. Like, this is something that D has brought up a multiple of times. So, Miss Gucci, you might want to start trying to figure out a way to rectify that. Because that is something that clearly hurt her. And I understand completely. Like, ma'am, hello, you got an actual biological daughter. But because you want this nigga so bad, you want to play, you know, stepmommy doing the girl's hair or homework, cooking, all that type of stuff. We want to play housewife to a man. And while you actually really got a daughter over here that you're not worried about, like, I get these feelings. But, and then she said that the girls, like, messaged her, threatening, like, oh, now we knew, yo, yo, we trying to catch a fade with your mom, catch our one-on-one -on -one with your mama. Like, this is a mess. It's a mess. It's a mess. D, she dealing with baby daddy issues. Not surprised. She was, like, dealing with, you know, oh, you know, I'm not as confident, and I'm sure that's something that pushed him in the way after having a baby, understandable. Um, then only that, I have a baby, the quickest way to get rid of a man is to have a baby by him. It, shot the fucking Dineva, like, and that, especially at that age, absolutely freaking lootly. Fights are being had so he can go off and, you know, F around with all these, you know, uh, Keisha, Shantae's, and Becky's out here in these streets. We fight, make up, you know, get back together. Like, we already know where that's going with D. She ain't going to be making it with the baby daddy any much longer. Uh, but moving on. Aikisha, she takes uh, Latrice out to the same break spot that um, the girls had. They tried to do a, you know, a peace treaty. But instead of breaking stuff, they're painting. I guess they have, like, multiple, like, different rooms you can do stuff. So, um, so, Aikisha, you know, she was just talking to her like, hey, you're, how you doing, how you been, and everything, you know, and of course, Latrice always going to give the reverbial, like, you know, everything's good, and she's like, well, you know, Latrice, I ain't gonna lie, like, I've been thinking about you, she's like, oh, for real, really, she's like, yeah, girl, like, you know, you've just been on my heart for some reason, you know, I see you, and you know, I understand, you know, sometimes I, I Keisha is trying to ease her into it by specifically mentioning, you know, as a married woman, I understand married people's issues because that is a thing for Latrice. Like she needs to understand it or feel like she's talking to somebody that she trusts. And I am loving Aikisha this season. Like Aikisha, y'all, like she's really like bumped up to my favorite this season, like I just I'm really digging her energy. And when she talks to I when she talks to Latrice, I do feel genuinely that she means like, girl, call me if you're not okay. It's like girl, blink twice. Uh -huh. Blink twice. Hello, if you need help. Um, and she's like, you know, I, I get it, you know, girl, you know, sometimes you feel like you can't talk to your, you know, your single friends or whatever. So if you ever need anything, you can talk to me. And of course, Latrice, you know, I'm good, honey. Over here is good, honey. Anytime she always hits the people with the, you know, with the honey lies, dead giveaway. Are we good over here, honey? She's like, well, I mean, the way that 
Cliff was acting at that last party, you know, the way y'all ran out was kind of like, woo, you know, and she's like, well, you know my how he is, child. Like, she never wants to talk about Cliff's actions. It's always, well, that's just my husband, child. You know how he is, honey. And it's like, okay, we understand that's how he is, but that's the problem. That's how he is. Like, he needs to fix it. But... Latrice is always going to not feel comfortable calling out her husband because he always does this thing of like everybody else is the enemy you know that's what he did with Josh oh you you fraternizing with the enemy last time she tried to go out and just get drinks with him so he's already planting this mental seed of like you a bit you a bad wife how dare you talk about me or speak with other people like now you an enemy type situation and if there's one thing a lot of women kind of as just an observer is like you don't want to be a bad wife you don't want to feel like a bad wife and you don't want to feel like you're not doing a good job because it's the thing of like oh he gonna replace me you know oh he gonna replace me <laughs> and Latrice girl like I get it like I really appreciate that kiss she's like girl you know I'm you're just in my prayers and she's like well girl you too honey like you know you can never come to me if you need something girl and I kiss was like, you know, we just, you know, the way Cliff been acting and it's just like, we just want to make sure to check in on you that, you know, you good in case you ever feel like you don't have nobody you can talk to, you know, girl, I'm married, I get it, like, okay. And so Latrice, of course, it's just so writ written all over your face, Latrice, that it's like, you not good. You're not doing as good of a job as hiding it as you think, Buki, okay. Um, but I just, you know... Latrice, Aikisha, you know, she at least offered the extension. Is she going to use it? Probably not. Um, moving on. Um, what else happened after that? I'm trying to go through all the things that happened this episode. Um, oh, Gucci goes out and talks with Letitia. They go, like, on a, a walk, basically. So, they're walking, and she's telling her about her daughter, Dee, of course, having, you know, uh, mommy issues. The typical grown pains after having a baby um then they get into um uh they get into gucci doing like the the charity drive or whatever you know each year they do something different this year they're doing like socks and bags and all that type of stuff like that and of course she invited all the girls and she was talking about well you know uh, the, the the daughters, you know, they usually come with Selena, but uh, last year they've been coming, but obviously not this year. And, you know, uh, you know, we're obviously having issues after everything that she did. And Gucci, you keep trying to like straddle this middle line of like, you know, I was feeling like Latrice, she set it up. And even if she did, like the fact that, you, that you're even kind of like throwing the, well, even if she didn't, you know, I feel like, you know, it was just wrong. It's like, I don't think Latrice didn't go in there telling Selena to whoop your ass. Like, that's not what happened. I think, did they have a conversation like, girl, Selena, this is your moment? Yeah, but Latrice didn't egg on that fight. Selena, you did. Like, yes, Selena, yeah, you went over there. And was it petty of you not to speak to her? Yes, but it shouldn't have ended up in a fight, though. Like, Selena shouldn't have got all heated with because she ignored it. But I think Selena was like, girl, like she was waiting. Like she, girl, you didn't have to. Y'all's first interaction didn't have to be the time that y'all had y'all's y'all's conflict. Like Selena, I think was just too eager to try to get her camera moment that it caused both of them to just derail. And Gucci, you got to own your part in that, man. Like you to my old girl, you an extra and. You know, oh, you know, she admits, she's like, you know, I got a slick mouth. Like, you admit that you was chopping off at the bit. So, this is what happens. Like, girl, you played a part, point blank, period. Um, So, uh, Letitia, of course, asked about, you know, well, but what about, you know, Latrice and everything. And she's like, girl, you know, Trice, uh, you know, she, of course, wants to put mess in our marriage because hers ain't going good. She wants everybody else to be feeling bad like her. And, you know, Letitia kind of brings up how she wants to talk to her because at the end of the day, like, everybody seeing how Cliff is acting. And she's like, girl, you see how she pulled Cliff out the party, out of, out of the holiday party or whatever? And she did. The minute Letitia whipped up there, 
she pulled Cliff and was gone because when they when the teacher first walked in there, he said something slick like, girl, don't F with me or something like that. Like, Latrice knew that he was going to start, you know, wreaking havoc. And that's sad that you feel like you got to be on alert with your husband or keep him from, you know, speaking. He clearly has a lack of respect for women. Cliff is the good old, just the old Negroes that just feel like you here for me. You gonna listen to me. What I say go. Like he believes that and men like that are sickening. So speaking of Cliff, um, him and Latrice go out for a little lunch, a little lunch date. She's like, you know, me and Zaddy, we ain't been good lately and we haven't really had a date in a while. So we gonna go out. Plus I wanna share with him the good news. So they sit down and she's like, you know, we haven't had a date for a while, yada, yada. And she's like, but I got some great news to share with you. He's like, what? She's like, I just signed a big deal, you know, with Ultra. They've been, they do good with getting companies into, you know, places everywhere. And Cliff was not excited by any means of the word. He hit her straight with the how, 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 how you go with his little mush mouth ass. How you gonna do something like that? You know, you know, he's supposed to come and talk to me. You know, you're supposed to come and talk to me while you're there to do nothing. See, this the proud of the trees. You always you want to do something, do something selfish. You want to do something selfish, that's what I'm proud of. You know, you're supposed to come and talk to me. You're supposed to read the contract. You know, you're supposed to read the fine print. Latrice is like, I read the fine print. I read all of it. Yeah, you know, you just say you said all you say you do it. You know, you want to sit there and think about me because remember, we husband and wife. You ain't read the fine print. I bet you ain't get a lawyer. She's like, no, I got a lawyer. Everything he said, like she she had a rebuttal. Like she was ready because in Latrice's mind, she feels like this was an opportunity to show Cliff, like, you know, equality, right? Like I'm not just no you know, small fish, like, I deserve a little respect on my name, essentially, like, I went out there, got this deal completed on my own, and Latrice, you thought that was gonna make him respect you more, and it should have if you were with the right man, but uh, wrong, wrong answer, it literally just made him want to put his thumb on your put his thumb on your neck even more the more you try to elevate the more cliff is going to try to keep his foot on your neck like that's the way he operates you're not going to change this man he 60 years old uh um trees he's not changing he's not changing listen to me trees he's not changing point blank period with undercooked filet fish looking ass like He's not changing. And the more you, like she keeps saying, like, you know, I need to show him that, you know, I don't need him, like, essentially. And it's like, okay, girl, you doing all this, but unless he really feels in fear of you leaving or losing the woman he loves. Sorry, y'all was over here looking out of the driveway and I saw a car. Um, unless there's certain type of men that, like, unless they really are in fear of losing the woman they love, they have no, they don't act any different, which is why a lot of men, a lot of women have the same complaint of, oh, their man didn't get bad until after they had a child. It wasn't until after they had a baby that he started acting different. And it's because the truth is once a man feels like a woman is one, uh, less appealing to society and to other men, two, stuck in a situation and three, doesn't have a way out, that makes a man treat a woman like ass. Like, it only reinforces their bad behavior. And unfortunately, you check off two of the list of, one, he don't feel like you leaving, and two, luckily you ain't got a baby by him. Like, there's anything you ain't gonna do and you shouldn't do is have a baby by, by him. Point blank, period. Um, but yeah, he don't feel like you leaving. Like he has no fear of you leaving and, and feels like you have no way out. And so it's just like, she start crying. The trees at that too, the smallest thing is making her cry. And that's another sign too, that she's at the brim. Like the fact that she is getting so emotionally triggered so fast, the littlest things are making her cry. Well, not the littlest things, but you know what I'm saying? Like she's... So she's all she's tearing up so fast at the mention of the slightest thing being wrong in her relationship it is weighing on trees it really is um 
So she go outside. I'm ready to go. He or he was much mouth. You know this what you talking about. This what I'm talking about. You supposed to be a husband and wife. You sit here making contract deals with that me. That that you. That's what you do. It did cause you selfish. That's cause long as you get what you want, that's okay. Long as you get what you want, that's okay. Y'all right. That's how you. That's how you do. That's how you want. And then he said, I don't need you. Or like I don't. He said, like, I don't need to be with you. I don't want you or something like that. I was like, yo. He said that at the table, like. I don't have to deal with this. I don't, I don't have to deal with you. I don't need you or something like that. I was like, and Therese just sitting there just looking, just stuck all stupid, dumbfounded. Talking about, well, I I, let's not end the night like this. Like, girl, go to therapy. Go to therapy. Point blank, period. She's like, I'm ready to go. He like, well, go to the end. Like, y'all drove in separate cars anyways. So, um, moving on. Um, Trees actually there's a scene with Trees and her mama. Basically, long story short, she at she she at her brother's house once again. It seems that one it's that's clearly Cliff House that she moved into. It's giving real. He be kicking he be kicking her out, or she be leaving because Trees doesn't like conflict with Cliff. Because at the end of the day, Cliff don't listen. He don't consider none of the Trees's feelings. He don't try to understand her point of view. So there is no reason, like there is no good conflict with this man or there isn't conflict resolution. That's the thing, like you're going to have conflict in a marriage, but where's the resolution? The resolution is going to have to come with compromise. You think Cliff is compromising anytime soon with the trees? I don't think so. So best thing for her to do, she go to her brother's house to live past until, until Zaddy get okay. And then she come back and then start acting like a, you know, like a good wife, like a good wife would do, okay? And it the, the cycle starts over. But the mom is like, girl, like, yeah, you know, she was like, uh, well, good thing she said, you know, I'm not going to call him Zaddy no more. And, you know, I think I'm realizing, you know, I probably brought the trauma to relationship, you know, looking for the, the daddy issues. The daddy issues is a thing. And mama's like, oh, so you, you know, now you want a husband in comparison to the beginning of the relationship. And that's another thing, too, for a lot of men. In the beginning of a relationship, the woman is always, typically is the soft, feminine, like she's so giving. But then there comes a point where y'all wear that shit out. Y'all take advantage of that. And then the woman start acting different or in y'all's in y'all's words, start acting more masculine. And it's like, who is this woman? And it's like you created a monster because you weren't, you know, taking care of the woman's feminine soft side. And so also too, the growth of a woman, a lot of men understand like she's not always going to want to stay in the house and only want to cook clean, be a mattress made in a mule for your ass. So when that starts to evolve and there starts to be, to be self growth in the woman, a lot of men don't know how to react to that. They don't. They truly don't. You have to be in a marriage with somebody who understands I'm going to be married to an, a constant evolving human being. And Cliff doesn't like the evolution that Therese is on, point blank period. Um, so mama was like, girl, he don't need to raise you. I already raised you. And she's like, yeah, you know, she's like, I feel like I'll stay in my brother's house for another week, you know, until he decides that uh, he want to get right. Okay, okay. Um, so, um, uh, the charity event. So everybody showed up to the charity event, helping hand, even Sunjay and Star show up. Basically, you know, they're going to act like ain't nothing happened. You know, Gucci's like, glad the girls came. Uh, they do, you know, the drive. Tamara was there for a short minute. She had to get to work after that. Um, <laughs> um, um, so at the, um. Uh, Oh, shoot, there's a scene with Marie and Tisha. I forgot about that. Y'all, Tisha's starting to show some traits I ain't really feeling. Like, I ain't gonna lie. Tisha's showing some traits I ain't really effing with. But Marie ain't over the fact that she's like, girl, Treese lied. And you were my friend. You my best friend. And Tisha felt like, well, dang, you know, this was years ago. I thought it was resolved. But the thing is, I get why Marie is mad because, like, sometimes it really is about principle. It is just simply about the fact that, like, you know this girl lied. You found out that she lied. 
to hold her accountable like you be trying to hold me accountable point blank period you always want to say i you know make sure i'm held up but what about latrice and Letitia, from her point of view, was just like, oh, you know, when it came out that, you know, what Latrice said, I thought that was like you, like enough, basically. No, it ain't enough. Call her out. Especially the fact that you want me to sit on another day on brunch in with her and they going back and forth because Tisha's like, oh, you making it about you. You making it about you. No, I'm not. But if you want me to be there next to the heifer that lied on me. And she said, we talked about this in private. Like, so these private conversations now getting brought in from the camera. And girl, we need to get this shit fixed. Letitia apologized, which is good. So now her and Marie can move on. But back to the charity event. Um, you know, it was a good turnout. Letitia pulls uh, Teresa to the side and was like, you know, girl, you know, I just, I, I really got to talk to you, girl. Because at the end of that, I'm going to let you know, your marriage is a topic of conversation. And Teresa's like, girl, I ain't even worry about that. I don't care what nobody got to say about me. When I go home to my husband and my man, I'm good. And she's like, girl, Latrice, point blank period. We talking about your marriage because we're looking at how Cliff is acting out here in public. If he's acting like this out here in public, what is he doing behind closed doors? And that's only the logical next step to think as a person who is an observer out in public. We're watching your husband talk to you like ass, be dismissive of you, belittle you in public. We watched this man grab your arm on TV, call you an mf -er, a bitch and all that. Like he's comfortable doing. And that's the thing too with these delusional ass marriages like Tisha and Marceau. Like they're so used to in th that world of delusion inside the household that they take it out into the world and think everybody else is going to be in that delusion too. And then when they not, y'all want to get mad at them. Or, or then when they call them out, all of a sudden, we haters, we the problem. Especially if you single. Oh, my God. Be single and calling out married people shit. Like, they just, that's their always their go-to. You know what I mean? You don't know. At the end of the day, it don't take a genius. A bad relationship is a bad relationship, period. Whether you single, married, or not. You see when, you it don't take a lot to see what a bad relationship is. When, you have, when you're watching an individual incapable of deciding to change for the person that they love. Point blank, period. And so Latrice, she tearing up because at the end of the day, Latrice, you know, you know, written all over your face and you can't hide it no more. Like Latrice said, you can't keep trying to stick up for this man no more. You can't hide it. Like we're watching him do this out in public. So it's like, that's why we're constantly checking on you because it's like, girl, we see it. So Latrice tearing up and that's where the episode ended, y'all. So next week, um, we're going to see a baby shocker, I guess. Um, what you guys, tell me what you feel about the episode. Do you guys feel like Latrice ever going to leave uh, the relationship with old mush mouth, um, with old caramel macchiato, with old molded honey wheat bread, with asparagus top on his head? <laughs> Um, and do you guys feel like y'all looking at Tisha a little different? I feel like I'm looking at Tisha different in the of this season. And how do you guys feel about Gucci? Do you guys feel like Gucci ain't taking accountability for her part in the fight with Selena? I appreciate y'all for tuning in. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter. I'll catch you later.